Hello, welcome back to Rapid Regeneration. I'm David Escamilla. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not making claims about diseases or medical claims. I'm just an expert on the body healing itself using food, using natural wellness techniques, using biohacking, using some of the amazing tools that we have on this planet. And I just am somebody who's happened to I feel forced to learn about all this info. I didn't necessarily sign up for this for this job, but I got drafted into it because I just got so sick and felt so horrible and just had to figure this stuff out for myself. And what I realized over the years of doing this, almost a decade, is that um, there's information out there that's lacking in nuance. Um, you know, there's information out there like, hey, just, <clears throat> you know, just eat raw or raw foods, you know, and, and you'll heal yourself or just be raw vegan and, and that's all you need. And this information is lacking. And I realized a lot of this stuff the hard way because I learned about the power of raw foods and used it. And it's helped me so much, um, except that I realized that there are these these landmines and these booby traps that are set that you can fall into in the world of raw foods. And you have to just be aware of this. Now, there's this is one of two remaining segments on foods before we're going to move on to some amazing, powerful techniques. But you can't, uh, I mean... You can, if you want, skip to those, but you really, you really should complete your understanding of the food world. Well, to do that, you should realize that there are levels to these raw foods. As much uh, amazing as they are, and they'll help you, just realize what the levels are. And in the next segment after this, it's gonna be the raw foods to consider avoiding. But before getting into those specifics, it's, it's just important to know what's the hierarchy of raw foods, you know, and if your goal is that you're, you're having a health problem right now and you're trying to solve it, and by the way, that's my mission, that's why I'm doing this, is I'm committed to help you to solve your problem <clears throat> as fast and as quickly and as effectively as possible. So if that's your goal, or if your goal is to ascend and to elevate to the next level and beyond in terms of your energy, your consciousness, uh, the life that you live here, your performance. If you wanna do that, you have to realize that the food world is a spectrum and the raw food world is a spectrum. And so just understand all raw foods are not created equal, and you can eat up or down the spectrum, but it's gonna bring you up or down the spectrum. It can bring you down, or it can bring you further up. And each person is different. So you have to figure out what works for you. You can have one person that, that functions really great when they eat a lot of fruits, you know, and eat very little vegetables, Another person maybe does really well with a lot of big salads and vegetables and maybe vegetable juices. Some people really can't stomach eating that much nuts or seeds. Um, and other people seem to do fine. You have to figure out what works for you. But also, you need to be able to acknowledge the the universalities of these foods and, and the actual molecular chemistry of how these foods work and, and the, the qualities that they have. You know, some raw foods are more friendly to the human digestive system than others. Um, and so this is where a lot of people plateau. They get blocked from reaching their health goals and they get stuck because they get, they get all into the raw foods and the power of it, but then they choose to eat certain raw foods, they get into a comfort zone, and it still creates imbalances, and that individual can fail to really thrive 
and get where they're trying to go ultimately. So again, in the next chapter, it's gonna be the raw foods to consider avoiding specifically, but in this chapter, it's about the hierarchy. So the hierarchy at the bottom, okay, you have your nuts and seeds. These are um, amazing foods, nutritious, a lot of great qualities. I love them personally, but you know you have to understand this is a very protein heavy food. Um, it's, it's, it's gonna require a lot of digestive activity, a lot of stomach acid, a lot of pancreatic enzymes, a lot of liver activity, and this is, this is an acid forming process. It's a complex digestive process. Your body has to transmute those protein and fat molecules into usable energy for the body. This creates a lot of acids. I, I don't wanna say a lot um, compared with other even more acid forming foods, but it creates digestive and metabolic acids um, that then your kidneys are gonna have to, to filter those out. Could create issues with the thyroid, parathyroid, um, calcium balance issues. So you're just you're just playing around and eating foods that are acid forming. Uh, a lot of people get, in, get into trouble with this because they eat too much nuts and seeds. And we looked at the role of nuts and seeds. They're a great transition food. They're great if you're already super healthy and you're just trying to have fun. But for somebody who's really committed, uh, has a problem that they're trying to solve and really trying to detox deeply and regenerate, it's very tough to really get deep detoxification if you're eating a lot of these nuts and seeds. Um, so really, if you're seriously ambitious, okay, this category you should eat from more occasionally. Now again, I did say this was nuanced. This is why this information is so valuable that you're learning this because there are nuances. There's levels within the world of nuts and seeds. Okay, you have some that have a more favorable omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. And so, for example, hemp seeds, chia seeds, and flax seeds are the most amazing superfood seeds. And, um, and the, these sources of essential fatty acids, of balanced omega-6 to omega-3s, are amazingly beneficial. Um, so I do draw an exception to these being at the bottom of the hierarchy uh, for these particular ones. Although you still shouldn't eat too much of that, even of these ones that are your flax seeds, your cheese seeds, your hemp seeds, because you can eat too much fat and too much protein. Uh, so, okay, the next level up on the hierarchy of raw foods is gonna be your fatty fruits. This can be your avocados, your coconuts, and your olives. Okay, uh, so these are less acid forming than nuts and seeds, <clears throat> but they are high in fat. It does cause a lot of work to the digestive system and it can cause a slowdown of the lymphatic system. And also these foods tend to have a high ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, so it can create an imbalance there in the body, potentially problems with inflammation. A lot of other people get stuck here, okay? Um, people, they, they, they discover the benefits of raw foods, but they reach a plateau because they're eating so much fat. Um, and don't get me wrong, I enjoy coconut and avocados. And for years, I used to eat these foods and I found that they took the edge off and they satiated my cravings without eating nuts and seeds. Um, and I made a ton of progress eating them, but my velocity accelerated at an even higher level when I stopped eating them so often, I started eating them more occasionally, and, and I instead would eat the chia or hemp or flax seeds. So in that sense, those seeds are further up on the hierarchy. Um, so you see it's kind of a, 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 a nuanced a little bit of a hierarchy of a spectrum. So next up on the hierarchy was gonna be your dried fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, dehydrating and 
drying fruits and vegetables it can be a great way to add variety to add texture um, and culinary experiences in raw foods you know the water content gets removed so it's not as alkalizing of a food it's not as electrically available it's not as hydrating as the fresh uh, ripe version of these foods Okay, next up is gonna be your raw, fresh vegetables. <clears throat> so, now in some cases, you know, humans are not really herbivores, and you could say that we lack the digestive tools to really stomach and process uh, many of those, these foods, which are so cellulose rich and, and fibrous. Uh, but, yes, generally vegetables are a good raw food, they provide a lot of nutrition, vitamins, minerals, um, cellular intelligence, getting fiber into the system, cleaning out the GI tract, and building strength and muscle for those interested in athleticism. Um, now, there are some sort of problem vegetables. Now, those are going to be covered more in the next segment about raw foods to consider avoiding. Um, overall, vegetables are alkaline forming foods. Um, compared with nuts and seeds, which can be more acid forming. And vegetables are generally easier to digest than high fat fruits. Um, they do have some downsides. You know, how much fiber that they're, they, they are is more work to digest. Also, they have low sugar content. They're less calorically dense. And so you have to eat a lot more vegetables than fruits to satisfy your energy. Also, just know that vegetables don't compare with fruits in terms of electrical energy the vegetables have a lower amount of angstroms of electrical energy compared with the fruits uh, which are higher ener more energetic foods in terms of electricity okay next level as we get near the top of the hierarchy is herbs in terms of the hierarchy of raw foods these amazing plants are basically non-hybridized vegetables. Um, they're basically leafy greens in many cases, right? Except that they possess special healing properties and they're actually magical. You know, I can't say enough good things. Um, there, there's so many, so much credit given uh, within rapid regeneration to the power of herbs to activate cellular intelligence to stimulate certain systems of the body and to help the body's self-healing process. So that's why they're right at the top of the hierarchy. Uh, it could be even more powerful than fruits, but they're tied with fruits or right below. I guess if you had to only choose one, I'm sorry, herbs, you, you would have to go. Uh, at the top of the hierarchy is ripe, fresh fruits. These are packed with nutrition, hydration, uh, probiotics, electricity, alkaline forming, and uh, provide the most amazing fuel um, to help heal and detoxify and regenerate the body. So I know you already knew that. Now there are levels to the types of fruits that you can eat. One of the levels is the stringent quality of a fruit. Okay, you have some of the most astringent fruits, meaning that they're going to pull out the most acidic chemistry from the body. That's going to be your lemons, limes, and grapes. And you have fruits that can be more or less astringent, um, whereas your your acid fruits are going to be your more astringent ones, followed by like your subacid versus like your sweet fruits, which are not going to be as much. So there's also, uh, in terms of the nuances of the top of the spectrum you also have this philosophy that tropical fruits could be more agreeable to humans than fruits that grow in colder harsher climates so under this premise fruits like pineapples mangoes melons and kiwis are more beneficial than apples plums cherries and pears so personally i can follow this logic you know, it does seem like humans are originally a tropical species. And so we're therefore eating more naturally to our actual natural habitat. You know, on an intuitive level, this seems to make sense. Although 
I see nothing wrong with eating the other types of fruits. I personally love a big bowl of cherries. And I think it's true what they say about an apple a day. Also, you can look at fruits considering their water content or how hydrating they are. So you have a fruit like a banana, which is a great fruit. I eat it all the time, but it's perhaps more of a structural and a strength building food and not so much of a detoxifier or hydrating food. It's more starchy, it's solid, it even contains a modest level of fat and protein. Compare this with like a watermelon or pineapple or fresh oranges. If you're trying to hydrate and detoxify body chemistry, then it seems like these more liquid fruits are more powerful detoxifier. Uh, and if you're trying to provide nutrition, build up your strength, and eat something more functional, then the banana is great for that. So you may find if you're not detoxing as fast as you want, look at what you're eating and see, are you eating a lot of um, those, those type of fruits like a banana and maybe try to try to change that up. So there are levels, even at the top of the hierarchy, I know this gets painted with a broad brush. People say raw foods, this, raw foods, that, and lump everything together. There really is a spectrum. And so you wanna eat from the spectrum uh, from the direction that you wanna go. If you wanna keep getting elevated up and transcend up, uh, then you wanna eat towards the top of that spectrum and, and it'll pull you up, um, guaranteed, guaranteed. So that's it. Um, now in terms of the, the problem children, the problem foods that are in the raw food world, I'm gonna cover that next in the next segment coming up. This is about the spectrum. Now you have an awareness of the spectrum. Last piece of the puzzle, right, is to figure out where in the spectrum are the pitfalls, the traps, and the landmines to avoid. So that's gonna be covered in the next segment. You're almost done figuring out the world of foods and building your full spectrum analysis of the world of foods. And after that, we're gonna move on to the most amazing biohacking techniques and natural wellness methods and things you can do and routines and products and um, yeah, just some amazing shortcuts. So those are all next, but if you're following through with this and you've learned all these segments about foods and you're gonna complete this last one, next one, then that is amazing and that is gonna serve you so well. <sighs> this is brought to you by rapidregeneration.com and my mission to help you. So keep going and I'll see you on the next segment. For more information, please follow at Rapid Regeneration or visit rapidregeneration.com.